sound good. All right, everyone, welcome. Uh, my name is Piers Kalea, and we are here at Southern Illinois University Carbondale at the School of Media Arts, where we have the great privilege, privilege and honor of Setra Samandari being our incredible uh, guest, a director and video effects art artist, as well as an interdimensional uh, video <laughs> effects artist. Satara Samandari's visual effects work can be seen in films such as Steadfast, Exemplar, Glimpses, and Dark Asset. She directed and created visuals for the music video Breathe Free by Shani featuring Andy, made visual effects for Jack Lenz's Here Comes Love about the Black Lives Matter movement. And she also created three full CG videos for the Gardener of Rizvan to go with music Jack produced and wrote in collaboration with James Seals and Kingsley Thurber. Her next video effects project is for the film Vertical, directed by Mariam Pierpont. Thank you so much, Cetera, for joining us. And I am just going to hand it over to you because I know this is a production workshop. So our usual questions are going to all be answered by you. But of course, there'll be time for students to ask questions as well. Thank you so much, Cetera. Thank you, Dr. Kaloya, for having me. I'm so excited to share some uh, ideas about real-time engines and virtual production with you guys. Um, so before I start, I want to know hmm, how much do you guys know about visual effects and real-time engines? Any ideas? I guess. Um, so well, let's get into it. And then at the end, um, I'm just gonna save some time if you have questions. Um, so if you don't mind, I'm gonna share my screen uh, with- uh... I will talk about real-time engines in <laughs> Unity. So what I, what I do know is that I love it. And the most that I did work with it was last semester with my graduate animation students. And we were basically creating movement within exhibition spaces for museums. And I was so excited. And that's why I'm so excited to see what's capable with this, with action cinema. The end. <laughs> thank you, thank you. That's very exciting to hear. Um, you have some experience with Unity. I love it. I love uh, virtual productions because, you know, like technology is super helpful to help creators actually um, looking outside of the box, right? Something that we haven't been able to do before. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so that way I can go, I can show you some stuff uh, because if I just talk and you don't know what I'm talking about, that's gonna be super boring. So let me see if I'm able to actually do this technical part correctly. There we go. All right, let me see. Um, let me get you guys back. Hmm. All right, can you see my screen well? Yes. Awesome. So, real time virtual production. Um, I'm using the game engine Unity for real time. There is many other game engines, few other ones out there. I love Unity because it's easier. The interface is like the one, like um, if you, you use uh, modeling or Modbox, Maya, any of those, uh, this almost has the same interface, so it's easy to use. Um, so in this project about a uh, real-time engine, I'm gonna talk about LED screens, about um, integration with um, you know 3D um, real-time engine and green screens, LEDs, um, HDR renderings. Um, so the first project that is a, a very good um, showcase for this real-time engine is called Dark Assets. Um, uh, this film was directed by Michael Winnick. Uh, before we get to it, it, let's go ahead and take a look at this trailer together. Fine, I'll bite. What's your story, John? I'm part of a secret spy program that implants microchips in the people's hands to make them super smart. Has that line ever worked for you? 
Microchips have been doubling in power every 18 months for the last several decades. I was a finely tuned weapon. The human brain, on the other hand, has remained virtually stagnant the last several thousand years. That was before the chip. Soon after my chip was implanted, I met an agent. Seems like that thing inside your head does a lot more than the doctor said. The doctor? Dr. Kane, the one responsible for the whole program. He wanted to push the technology forward and finally make a super spy. You'll be better than before. Smarter and more skillful in every way. You'll have the calculating power of the most advanced microchip ever invented. There won't be anything you can't do. All right, Mr. Super Spy. What am I thinking right now? How do I get rid of this devilishly handsome stranger? You're half right. Watch out. Not the one you were hoping for. So what just happened? As I said, the chip's still a work in progress. Maybe they should have perfected it before they implanted it in your head. There was a version of the chip before. Oh! But this time, they would have total control. Go get him. Aren't you breaking some spy code by telling me all this? Once you get into trouble. I already did. Get the kill switch, abort! It's not working! Hit it! Abort! You have an uncontrolled, dangerous military asset offsite. John Doe was supposed to follow orders. The chip leaves him no other option. Perhaps he still is. Who is it? His own. There will always be some guy who wants more power. For the chip program, begins and ends with Dr. Kim. I shouldn't be so hard on you. I'm just a lowly office drone. Please, continue. Great. So this is um, an action movie. Um, let's see if I don't. Mm -hmm. Fine. I'll bite. Next scene. There we go. Um. So uh, if you look at uh, dark assets, okay, let me see if I can see you guys because that's weird. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Let me there. No, we're here with you. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> So let me if you want you. us to talk back to you we can talk back every once in a while no let me put you guys like somewhere there so that way i can see uh, do you if i uh, if i share the screen right here you it's gonna it it covers your um screen as well yeah the video camera? yeah so let me get rid of it uh, Uh -oh. Okay. Uh, so dark assets. So if you, let me see this one, it shows uh the the real time engine. This chip uh um we created it in um in this environment. All of it is CG. Um. So when you're thinking about your environments and um you know your movie and planning for um uh, the script uh for location scouts it's um very good to think about ideas um that you can do in um in a real-time engine building the whole location and uh what the capabilities of a, the real-time engine is that you can do camera tracking on set there is a final pixel rendering this uh scenes in the movie um they were all final pixels and then there is also live action integration. So by that, what I mean is, let's go to the next slide. Um, so if if you see this scene right here, um, this is all um, a CG environment, and these um, guys were on um, uh, green screen. Uh, so the way this worked is that you, you can shoot it on green screen. Let's see if the next. Let's t let's take a look at it. And then the, the camera move is done afterwards um, on uh, in the real-time engine. Um, so if we go to the next slide, uh, let me 
come over here. So the this is how we planned. It was all done on green screen. And this is the holograms. And then we created the, the CG background. And then you, you put uh, your green screens in, this, in the real-time environment. The good thing about the real-time environment is that if you go back to the slide, the, this is pro volume, means that um, your elements are all gonna be lit by um, and interact with the environment, the CG environment, meaning that each ball here that bounces the ball, uh, the the light um, everywhere, and you know, so whatever object that you have wherever in the scene is gonna be bounced, light will be bounced towards it, and then goes back to the other objects. So it looks much more photoreal than um, a normal um, a normal CG environment. So it's good to have pro volume. So those pro volumes are specific to the to the real engine when you're using real engine? Uh, Unity real-time engine has the pro volumes. It's very good to use them because then you get the correct and realistic um, light bounce. So if you don't have pro volumes, for example, if you have an object in the middle, the light bounce is going to be only one, uh, from one side. Pro volumes allow allows it to be light bounce from everywhere, and then it bounces back to the object. So in real life, the light bounces many times back and forth between objects, right? So for example, if, if I have this light bouncing to my face, then it bounces back here to the to the flower, and then bounces back to me. So the pro volume allows you to do that. Then technically what it does is that as if you really had your object, your talents in, in the actual scene. So if you go back to this right here, if you look at it and the camera move was done afterwards. So the shot was done static on green screen and then we added the camera move afterwards in real time. So it basically creates a simulation that the actors themselves look like they were shot in a real environment with that real environment. They were shot in a real environment, but the, the environment itself was real and light was bouncing. Exactly. Off. So it's like a, it really gives you an idea about um, how you can um, go about. So the, the good thing about real-time engines and the CG environments is that, you know, it will save you um, time and money if you have to travel to different places um, in the world to shoot your movie about the story depending on the story then you have more options of thinking about CG environments and green screens uh, later we're going to talk about LEDs LEDs are also another options which are very that is very exciting as well so this is the behind the scene so what happens is that what we do in this is the this is the camera tracking. You need that if there is camera movements on set. In this movie, there were several camera movements on set and uh, the green um, talents in, on green, green screens later were moved to the CG environment, which there was another extra sh move on top, uh, which for that you need the camera tracking. So the camera tracking helps if, um, you know, to be able to um, take that camera move that's on set. For example, the camera move here on Alexa will be transferred to camera tracking on the, in the CG world, which is super helpful. Now let's go. So this is another green screen that was composited. This is another so, way. Cetera, can I ask you just a question about that? Because I'm just a nerd real quick. So you're sure. saying that you're shooting with an Alexa, which was on a slider, and mm -hmm. then you had to replicate the slider movement in the CG environment. So you actually had to have a tracking machine that was matching the movement of whatever the slider was doing. So it was like recording it mathematically what was done? It has to, yeah. It's called camera tracking. Mm. Um, so Unity has its own camera tracking, which is uh, affordable to use. That's what I use. There is other camera tracking, uh, more expensive one called Moses. Um, if you do virtual production, sometimes depending on the value of the production, you might need that as well. But for these, uh, you know, whenever the, so the DP will have the camera tracking on top of the camera, mounted on top of the camera, 
whatever camera move the DP does, the camera tracking will will take that in. That is needed for the CG environment. If there is movement in the scene that you're going to be transferring that movement exactly to the CG world. Um, so uh, several things that are very important for that uh, to keep in mind is to, you need to have your focal point, the, the lens and uh, uh, the um, focal, focal distance, the lens and depth of field. And also the the best is to scan um, the area to make sure you have all the measurements. And by scanning is that we we just scan it and then bring it to uh, you know uh, uh, bring it um, to to a three D uh, world via photo photogrammetry. Are you doing those getting all those readings manually by looking at the lens, or what are you doing to get all? Yes, the usually you know the best is to know the scene. And you have to, um, you know, just the best is like to sit next to the DP before the shoot, ask for the lens, the focal point and the distance. And then they have to measure um, the distance from the camera to the, to the ground. Also, it's very important to know the angle of the camera. All of these are important because later when you wanna composite and go to your CG world, you need to know all that to match it exactly. Otherwise, your camera is not going to line up. And if the camera moves ever so slightly, so they can't move it much then each time. Uh, it's uh, You can actually, there is a scene that um, there is this scene uh, in Dark Asset that it's the, the environment is totally CG. What we did was like we... Uh, the camera the the camera moved through these tunnels had to move through these tunnels to go to this room and there isn't uh, you know that the tunnels uh, or like the area that we needed to go to get to that room is all in CG so in the, in in your green screen you don't you know if the DP doesn't know where that area or those doors or walls are mm -hmm. they can't see it so what we did if you look at the left right here we were able to see our CG environment and the depth sensor here will um will move with the camera so the DP can move slightly um, where they need to and depending like for example if you do a lot of movement for example mm, I don't know like that would be a good example would be the jungle book or mm, Mandalorian so there is like mm, I was know. thinking of the same thing like uh what if I went handheld and so then the DP, or if they had a vest on with Steadicam and they were going yeah. through exactly like you were saying, then they could use the monitor as a visual to see the CG environment and then work with that environment. Exactly. Coinciding with it. So they would need it next to them to be able to see. Is that yes. correct? Yes. So you mount it on top of this and you'll be able to see the CG world. And the camera tracking has, you have to have the camera tracking if your camera moves, uh, because uh, then you need to transfer that camera tracking to your CG environment as well. So now let's go to the next show, right? Next slide show here. This one is an example of Final Pixel. Uh, the background environment is, um, of course, the, the CG environment, which the light bounce everything on. The, on this talent is all, uh, you know, showing uh, how the light bounces back. Uh, let me see, but this one is a video, so it shows like more of, this is, this one was not the final one, so it's a little flat, uh, but it shows the light bounce. So if we go to, let's see if I can go to the next slide show, right here, so this is what, he was shot on green screen and this is the background and the, you know, the pro uh, volume helps to integrate the foreground and background together very well. This one was a composite shot in, in Nuke afterwards. So you render your background and then you put your foreground and then you integrate both. So there are different options that you can always do with, uh, uh, with, uh, with, uh, virtual productions or, or VFX. This, for example, right here, let me show you. 
Um, there's camera, a slight camera move on this one. The background was made in, um, this is a CG background and uh, it matched, it had to match the perspective and camera move of the green screen and integrate them both together. This is pro volume writing that helps to integrate both together uh, and create um, this lighting right there. You see like the, the, the lights bouncing back and forth between the background and the foreground integrates it very realistically to each, to each other. Now, uh, let me see. This is another another thing you can do in um, in um, your shots. For example, in this scene, there was this app that they had to interact with. Um, what what we did is that we had uh, one of our talented uh, artists make that. He actually his name is Colin um, Zagap. Where he actually made the app for this scene. So then uh, what we did, this was uh, on shot on green screen and then integrated it with the background. But this app right here is all actually um, ready to go and see. Um, so it, uh, they were very able to um, interact with it, use it, move it, change things in it. So that's, uh, that's a very good uh, technique to have instead of um, just uh, compositing that later. So that was actually creating the app or um, thinking outside of the box helps save you a lot of money because there was a lot of shots that was this app was used in. So then we didn't have to actually go back and composite those. So uh, the next one is uh, LED. Um, LED screens are actually very popular these days. Um, the This music video um, that we shot was during COVID and uh, the um, musicians, Andy and Shaney, very talented individuals. I can't believe you shot with Andy, amazing. <laughs> very talented. How lucky. <laughs> They actually, uh, uh, they, they, you know, it was very nice to to work and collaborate with both I, Andy and Shaney. Yeah, yeah. Um, Shaney came to me and said she made this music video. She made this music, um, uh, this song. She wrote this song and made the music for it about freedom in Iran and women's women's rights. And that's something I do um, on the side. Um, I work for human rights, um, uh, I'm a human rights activist. And uh, so when I heard her music, I was like, I can help you um, create something for it. So it's like a little short, but um, so let's get to the, 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 the LED screen. With LED, the good thing about it is that it will give you a chance to be able to go to many different places, um, but be in the same place. So that will save time and money. And also it's for safety, it depends how many talents and individuals you have on set. Um, so for example, this shot needed um, to be in a forest so, and we were not able to like for those moments and the time of the day, the lighting go to a, an actual forest. So then um, we decided to use LED. Um, so for this one, what I did, um, let's take a look at first the music video together. Um, this story is about women's right in Iran, um, particularly. This was shot in uh, 2019. And afterwards, uh, we're going to go through. Thank you. 
can feel the air I can move in dreams When time is standing still But hope Has left me all alone And endlessly I roam With nothing but my will So you better fly, little bird Fly high, little bird So like an eagle Push the wind through your middle So that music video, um, it was a great collaboration between many talents. Um, so that's something, you know, I wanted to talk about how it's important to be able to be open to ideas and let all the talents really do their best at what they do um, to have a successful project. This project um, didn't have that much budget for it. But even with that limited budget, everybody did their 100%. So it came out um, the way it came. Um, so usually this is what I did for the LED screen. You know, everybody has their own ways of directing and um, shooting their scenes. What I like to do is because I do multi things. Um, you know, if you're handy with ed editing and coming with concepts and stuff like that. That's super helpful. I love to have my lightings already and examples of what I want to collaborate that with the DP beforehand. Um, so that's what I had. Like, for example, I had the examples of lightings, what I wanted on set. Um, and I had some concepts already um, there. Then also I did my own um storyboardings and then uh, with the storyboarding is always good to collaborate with dp um, and with um, also the rest of the talents to you know to be all on the same page and 
we um what we did is that we built sets on ourselves because actually believe it or not making the feathers uh having you know custom designing and, and building costumes and stuff like but might be very costly so we decided to become creative and just make it ourselves this was um printed on um with a 3d printer um and then we just came up with designing it ourselves and then we um the, the story was about helping um you know the, it was the story of hope so we had to grow the feathers. So that's what we did. Um, so we, you see right here, um, the the forest, there were two different forests. There was the dead forest and then there was the alive forest. These you can, sh you know, build your um, uh, CG wars on um, in Unity. I used the, the real time um, game engine Unity and you just, wow. What you do is you create your scenes, you save your cameras, um, so you know what your scenes are um, to be able to um, then put them on LED on the day of. For this music video, we used three different environments and shoot everything in one day. So it had to be done very, um, you know, the uniqueness of this project was that that, that everything was like, time you know time was um everything because we had only one day access to that um led screen um so therefore we the best is to to save your camera moves on your game engine have everything ready know what you want to do so this here um we turned the green screen the led screen to green screen and we just um, shot um our talent there and there there she is right here that you integrated in the in your um, CG world, and then we did the extra camera moves were done later. Um. So with the LED screen in, in the background, sort of, you could use it as a green screen and then put in the environment, but you could also, as in the shot you had with yourself, and then something in the background, it could also be a background at the same yes, time. Yes, exactly. Right? For example, this we, uh, we were um, testing uh, the Blade Runner scene. Right, um, right, yeah. You know, this and is this is the same thing they're using in Mandalorian right now. Exactly, yes. Right. So if you get into it, um, this is all CG. If you so, if you get get a chance to see the video by itself on YouTube with high res, you can see the light bounce on the water and all the integrations. that are like super. Um, realistic. The these are all CG. This is um, our green um, green screen inside the CG, and this is LED in the background. There is a foreground. So if we go to it, if we look at um, these, uh, let me go to. I want to show you. Um, there we go. So let me see. There is a behind the scene to say what's time. I'm gonna go there. In the behind the scene, you will be able to see. The, the best is for a successful LED shoot is, or any shoot is to have collaborations with, with the DP and um, if you're directing or um, with also the producers, everyone to be on the same page. So everybody becomes passionate and you know what the project is about. So this is where we were talking about what you want to do. And uh, we had our um, amazing um, uh, production designers uh, building the set for us uh, his name is Bob um, and then the best is to take you know what 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 I did is I I had um, a um, screenshot of my different environments and gave it to Bob to um, make the uh, what was needed for foreground for it and he did an amazing job he changed uh, actually we changed two environments, two uh, foregrounds, and uh, three uh, backgrounds. So you see how he's integrating the foreground. Oh, that's and, incredible. And then what we need to do is, um, his name is Paul Wason. He uh, did a great job, actually. It's very good to be able to work with amazing, talented individuals. 
So you see how you integrate and then your background you integrate. You see this right here? That is the measurement of the height of a person. So you need to have that to, to be able to know how, how big your screen is, like where the palette's gonna fit in, into your CG world. And, uh, and Setara, you did mention something that you, you had to know the, how you wanted to move the camera before you began, right? Yes, yes. How so. did you know how you wanted to move the camera before? How did you decide um, so the, be before? the best way, because I have, you know, um, what I do, what I did was actually best um, that works for me is that I know my, um, I, I sit and storyboard all of my story and I know what camera angles I have, what lens do, am I using? um uh, what's coming next and then i cut my storyboard and then also i use um um stock footage and i just build my um whole entire um uh, uh story on on uh, and edit it so before doing any of these i already have an edit of what i want to do okay so you're like we were watching something with edgar wright um last week with the narrative film production and basically for Baby Driver, he did an entire animatic of the entire film. And you're sort of doing the same process, right? Uh, yeah, that's what I do. Because, you know, some people would say one day shoot um, with singers, with three different environments, three different costumes and change. All that is impossible. But, you know, like if you plan it correctly, that's possible. So, you know, like not all the directors or everyone um, else would have access to cuts their their scenes or put it together but storyboarding definitely helps if there is um virtual production we always like help and collaborate with um, our wonderful directors and help them um, already plan ahead of time what their lenses are going to be what are the camera moves so with led is very important so this led the measurement was um 30 by 10 i think and then this is a sony venice camera especially for the leds you need to have like a very a, a good sensor camera the sony venice does a great job in um how now we, when we go forward you see that there is this like total darkness but sony venice actually captures the talent um uh, on the scene where andy walks in um from the darkness we actually can see him with sony venice and also with LED screen, what I would recommend is that we shot all of our scenes 6K because then you, with LED is depending on uh, how big your production is, you might not have that much option to move your camera where you want to. So the 6K gave us an option to be able to zoom, zoom in and zoom out later in post. So that was something that we used. And also, yeah, so, the best is to know um, ahead of time. And also the you see the scenes um, in Unity when you build them, you can go actually location scout in different places in the CG world and save those camera options. You can actually go and save, there is whatever camera move you do in the CG world, there is an option to save it. And then you just name them camera one, camera two, camera three. And then on set, you just click on it and it will show up on your LED screen because you need to know all of those ahead of time to be able to, be able to save your time. So it's like a favorites with the camera or, or almost like uh, if we were doing TV broadcasting, I'd switch to camera one, camera two. Exactly. So you need to know all those ahead of time. Otherwise, you know, with especially LED is not something that um, it's more expensive. So you know, that will help to save um, a lot of time and, money um and be able to do more and then of course uh you know like you have uh, depending on the production you have many people on set so you want to know ahead of time what you're doing for me what works is always i want to know exactly all my shots i want to know exactly what camera angles uh, am i doing and then of course on set you do extra stuff on the side but the plan a is always to know <laughs> and cut the movie together um, with stock footage, or, you know, all the the lighting and everything. So that helps with the DP as well to be able to go over all of those together. So that way, when you're on the set on the day, 
you actually get to do um, what you're doing. One thing that's very important is to have a an extra day to go and um, with the DP and um, you to make sure with the lightings if you have a gaffer in our case our um, amazing DP Leo was also our um, our gaffer um, everybody uh, chipped in for this was a human right project um, so you need to have everyone on board to be able to do everything fast 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 to know what the lights do you want to have where do they where are they going how many environments do you have so we had ready and switched between them very fast did you have any um, rehearsal time with the with the actors um you know so the what uh, i was very blessed because um andy and shaney are multi-talented individuals and we had an amazing violin player and guitar player um, so in between the sets, um, when everyone was changing, we did the rehearsals a little bit, um, not uh, not as much before. But you need to have the rehearsals, especially with your LED screens. Actually, no. One day we had a one um, test. You need to have a test day with LED to make sure the the height of your actors are actually integrating correctly in your LED. Um, the background and foreground matching correctly is the camera. There is, you see that there is the tracker. You sh sh make sure on your test day everything works very well. You need to have your DP there. You need to have your um, the the LED. The people who are um, involved with the LED stage there to make sure everything works. And one thing that's super important in real time is to always have your Wi Fi. Um, your own Wi-Fi device. Do not rely, never ever rely on the Wi-Fi of the 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 area, the place, because uh, real time the Wi-Fi's might not work with each other, might get disconnected. So then you're gonna lose time. Um, so you're saying you, make your phone into a hotspot instead? Is no, safer? just grab, just take a Wi-Fi de um, Wi-Fi um, device with you. Just grab one and take it with you. And connect all of your um, everything to that particular Wi-Fi. Okay, that's very important. Otherwise, even like in big conferences with um, you know multi-million um, dollar uh, budgets with hot hot spots and Wi-Fi's, you still need to have your own Wi-Fi because what happens is that if there are multiple projects happening in the same place, the Wi-Fi's go and you know they they um, cut each other off. So I don't know how to explain that, but you need to have your own. They interfere with each other, so it doesn't work. Especially in real time, you want to make sure you have your own Wi-Fi. That's number one lesson. Um, so let me see. This one is the same. This should be something else, but let me see. Okay, so this right here, if you see, that's the camera tracking. Um, so what happens is that this camera tracking actually tracks what's happening on the LED. So for example, when the DP starts moving forward with the camera, um, then we also, this tracks back to the, to, the, to the engine. And then we actually like, for example, you imitate walking in the, in the forest. So let me see if I have an example to show you. Mm. Oh, here, let me show you this. So you see when you have fog on your LED, then you actually add fog to your foreground. And you make sure everything's like, um, the best is to be able to to see everything on your monitor and check uh, every everything, especially if you're shooting on a 4K to 6K, of course, every little details, you pay attention to people's makeups, uh, because this is all, you know, you, you want to make sure you, you don't have enough, um, you don't have, um, much left for post. Um, uh, for example, if you see shine on uh, on your talent's uh, skin, that's not supposed to be there. Have your makeup people just take care of those and clean them. Because um, these things sometimes in post become more expensive to take care of. So here we are doing the rehearsals. So you see, you see exactly, this is the imitation of walking in the forest. Um, I think somewhere here is going to show up. So here, see in this monitor, you can exactly see exactly what's happening. 
and what the lighting is going to be, what you see, how much uh, place do you have to walk. You see the darkness right there, and this is Sony when it's painting it like that. With uh, LED, one thing that's super important is to make sure you don't get that much close to the LED or really focus on it as much, the, not to get noises or uh, flickers. And, you know, with real-time engine, you just move everything. So, for example, this light, we move it with, uh, when Andy's walking, we move the light in real-time with him. So it exactly like you animate the light exactly as he walks, you just animate it with him. So here, that was like the length of the green, the LED. It's, uh, let me see. the forest here we changed it to the this one is the green screen we, we changed the LED to be green so with green is very important to know your lighting and it's always best to know what your environment is going to look like so you lit your green screen specifically for that to get the best results otherwise like for example if people hearing um, visual effects or um, you know they hear oh there's a screen screen that we have to use and they just like put some green back there and then shoot their talents and they're like here we go it doesn't really work that way otherwise it's just not going to work very well if you the lighting for the green screen is not done correctly or the actual green screen is not done, the, it's not the correct uh, green, or if there's something in, in the scene that doesn't match. Uh, so it's always good to um, consult with your visual effects supervisor beforehand. So How much was the rental of the 30 by 10 LED? If you don't um, mind me asking. That particular one, I'm not going to be able to say, but uh, this uh, this uh, studio is called Funko Studio at uh, in LA, and the LED screens belong to OJ Wedding at Orbital Virtual. Um, AJ, um, like Orbital Virtual or Orbital uh, Virtual. Um, hmm, the cost depending, you know. Um, that is a good question, uh, honesty. The best is like, for example, if you're students and shooting for like something that is, um, there is always um, ways to consult with them, um, you know, go go and check the studios or the LED studios and talk to them and say, you're, I'm a student, I'm doing, my, you know, this uh, project and uh, see if they have like free times. Uh, you know, if you plan things ahead of time and you have everything done um, correctly, you can ask them to, you, you can just, you know, in collaboration with them and in, in exchange for, you know, making sure that um, there is like always, there is ways to collaborate. So, you know, it's good to double check with them with, to see if there is discounts or not. But each stage is different. The, the price for each stage is totally different. Um, let me see, let's go to the next one. Okay, so this one is that as she starts walking and as she walks, she imitates walking on the stage. But what we do is that we just move our we just move uh, the forest in, in real time. So uh, it, it sounds like she's walking and she's going forward. Um, I wish I had that somewhere. But um, in, the, in the, the music video, you see there's somewhere that she starts walking and going through branches. 
So we imitated the branches, some branches um, on the stage, and then actually you, in real time, you move through. Um, and the good thing is that because it's real time, you actually, when you're moving through, and if there is this tree or something on your way, you can move them aside in real time. So that's very helpful. And then whatever you guess is all, uh, you know, um, 4K uh, or 6K in our case, all done. There is no compositing afterwards. It's all the lighting there. Everything's like clean. This was a um, high dynamic um, range, so it was um, a very high quality lighting and everything. Um, but it depends on. So the do's and don'ts. Let me see. That's important if you want to set, especially with LED, uh, because in particular there. Um, they might be costly, so you want to make sure um, what to do and what not to do. The stuff we learned um, throughout the time was like, make sure your physical props and performers make up before shooting. Um, every little details matter. Um, then also communication with DP is the best. Um, uh, in previews, it's best to have uh, your DP around and collaborate with them and see whether there is camera moves that you want to do or whether there is a possibility. Um, measure your stage and see how much space can you go and move around. Um, so the smoke, adding smoke on, on set uh, usually helps. It depends on if you have fog or not, but sometimes then um, depending on the LED, this was uh, the pixel on this LED was 1.8. 1. 1. There is um, many LEDs right now that they can go as low as 1.4, which is amazing. It's like the, when you look at it as if you actually, it's, uh, you're actually in the real world. And uh, what not to do is don't focus on LED screen to avoid more UA patterns. Don't wait until the day of the shoot to test the equipments. Always take your equipment and have a test day. They will always allow you for a test day. Uh, depending on the stage, the test day um, can be, you know, like you only need a few hours for it. Um, so don't start shooting before adjusting your lightings and smoke to match exactly your set. So always it's best to look at your monitor and just think about that this is it. This is your movie. That's what you're going to see. Does everything integrate correctly or not? Um, and then make sure you have to, to you have your Wi-Fi router with you um, with a dedicated connection to the camera tracking. You need to have that. Otherwise, the LED and your uh, virtual world will not uh, connect, get connected and work together. And also make sure you calibrate the movement settings on the tracking device to correspond with the real world dimensions. So that's also important. And this is the end. And there we go. So uh, yeah, we used Virtual Studio, Orbital Virtual Studio, Funko Studio, amazing um, individuals that helped us with the, these collaborations and projects and I hope I was able to show a little bit of what to do uh, with the virtual productions for all of your um, incredible amazing talents that was wonderful so exciting and I cannot wait until we have this at our program and in fact we have uh Robert Dennis coming on Monday. So maybe we can convince him to buy us an LED screen. I think that would go perfect on our soundstage. What do you think, Clayton? Maybe that's maybe that's the purchase to get. Ashish, what do you think? Yes, um, that's 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 the only like that we should be. That's, we we should, need an LED screen, screen, a giant screen, one. Yes. I don't know if everybody knows, but we do have a giant green screen in the basement that's yeah, available that. to all of us and we can yeah. use. Uh, Ashish knows. I don't know if Ashish knows. I know. I know about that. Thanks. Okay. okay. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and open this up for questions from everyone to Sitara. And thank you so much for a wonderful, wonderful talk. Uh, anybody that has questions, go ahead and ask them. And I have a couple questions if you don't.
Yeah, uh, Sitara, I'm Ashish here and I'm doing my uh, MFA, a graduate student in SIU in the SOMA group. So uh, it was a great, uh, great, great lesson for me. And I've been, I've been, I always wanted to be an animator, but I failed it, but I ended up do, being an editor. And I know the whole process of the process. So do you think uh, pre-edit and post-edit, uh, pre-edit is like, as you said, pre-edit is always an important thing. And how do you, how do you mold the editing uh, after you get all your shots? Uh, because uh, I worked in Bollywood film as an editor and each, each uh, uh, clip cost a budget. So, uh, if, for example, you have a two seconds of a clip of an animation, and if you wanted a three three second, and you have an extra money for it, so how do you think uh, if you want an extra scene to happen in the any animation or a VFX thing, uh, pre-editing is most important. And how how do I understand the post-editing? If we need an extra shot of a scene, how can we extend that shot? Hope you got the question. Like I was talking about the pre-edit and post-edit form. Mm -hmm. well, thank you, yeah. um, Ashin, for asking those questions. Um, amazing, great job. Uh, congratulations on your studies. And uh, so I, pref I, everyone does it differently. You know, one thing that I like to do is always learn the box and think outside of the box. So I was like to think outside of the box about everything. When it comes to creating um, uh, anything that you have, like it's a movie, music video, if there is a CG, like for example, if you um, have a chance to go online just on YouTube to search for Res One Garden, those um, were all full CG and there is animations. Uh, if you, when you're talking about three minutes and two minutes animations, are you talking about the, the traditional way of, you know, using um, using the traditional animation? Is that what you were saying? Yes, tradi traditional animation, yes, yes. Yes, so with real time, um, you know, engines, you can't, you don't have to worry about that. Um, what I did, like if you go to, I don't know, let me show you. Let me see if I can search it up really quick and show you. Um, uh, let's see if I share my screen. Let me see if I can find it. So like, for example, in real time engine, what you can do is uh, to save you time, um, you can have, I, I do my, I do uh, my animations myself uh, and, uh, I use uh, Modbox to 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 build my uh, models, or uh, sometimes on my in Maya I make them. But you can also have someone help you make your, you know, for example, if you have a person walking in the forest. So in real time engine, you actually don't have to go and animate everything, and it take things don't take three minutes and two minutes. You actually in real time can move everything around and change things and move your talents. And also, and you can do as many minutes as you want, as an as long of a shot as you want. And then one thing that will help is um, you know, with animations, you can rig it. Um, rigging is um take more more time. It it uh, it's very timely. What I use is mocap. Um, you, there is many um, affordable, few affordable um, mocap um, you know, uh, products that you can use. You just wear them, and you know you just do the walks with whatever that the animation of your um, your uh, scene, whatever that is. For example, if it's the, a human walking around, and then you just transfer that animation into your uh, into your uh, CG uh, uh, environment. So that's going to save you time. I would recommend using that instead of like the traditional ways of sitting and animating things for a long time. So that's what I use. Um, in, in all of my CG animations, I use real time animations like with uh, mocap. And then you tweak it a little bit afterwards. 
And then in real time, the good thing is that you can play. The animations will play and then you can change or move them around before shooting your scenes. So for example, in the Res One Garden, what I did, I mocapped all of my uh, uh, CG uh, elements. Then as I was moving the camera, the animations, the, they would walk around and do their things. And then I would time it. But for example, with the real time um, camera, you go inside the CG world and start shooting your scene. And then you want at that particular moment as you walking, you know, like someone to walk through that scene. Then you animate it, move the animation back a little bit and then have them walk in. So that will save you a lot of time. I, um, I you know, I don't use the traditional ones anymore because, you know, using our, using uh, Maya animation, that that is, that is very uh, tedious and timely. And, and the editing is up to you. It depends. You know, I, I just like to do all of these because, you know, I've learned them. I love editing. I love, I um, edited the whole scene uh, for uh, for the Res One Gardens and uh, this, uh, uh, this music video myself afterwards. Um, it's just, you know, I love it because it's like puzzles. You put them all together and then you build it and you build it. Um, so pre-editing, I would recommend if you know editing and you know your scenes, that's super helpful to have some ideas. Yeah, and if, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, like, yeah, I always uh, do a pre-edit and then go for a post because you know what what's going to happen later. So, yeah. Exactly. So, you, yeah. you know, if you want extra scenes, you already know um, extra stuff that you want to do, but you already know exactly how many scenes you have. What would they look like? What would the lighting look like? And uh, the good thing with CG and LEDs like that, you don't have to worry about sunlight and daylight, losing light. So that's uh, always very, very uh, exciting for me. Uh, I always see uh, in, in a general way. Uh, Ashish, most Ashish of... we want to give other people a chance. To ask yes, sorry, 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 sorry. I know, I know you want to ask 1001. <laughs> Anybody else or we're going to let Ashish go? Anybody else with questions? Ashish, it's all yours. So yeah, thank you. Uh, I I always get confused uh, with the lighting lighting part in animation. I I feel the lighting is very darkish in most of the uh, animated films or the visual effects we use. Uh, do you think is it my way of looking, uh, my, or it is generally by? I see a lot of red red uh black and you know, those kind of colors in my is it my problem or it is it is where it is constructed in that way i just wanted to know that means hmm. um it depends if you're uh if you're using like for example maya for your animation what do you use what software do you use for animations I use Maya. I, I ask my friends to work on Maya. So, um, so with Maya, of course, rendering and lighting in Maya is totally different than real time. That's why I would re definitely recommend if you have animations, just to use start learning the real time. You know, if you search um, up Unity um, on YouTube, there is a lot of good tutorials to help you learn how to use it. It's very, the, the most of the, um, the the keys are the same as Maya, so it's very easy to get get a hold of it. Um, the shortcuts, everything, mostly is like Maya, and then um, that will help you. So just explore with it, and just put like some scenes in it, and then once you start using uh, the real time engine, you'll never go back to Maya for animating things. The only things I would use for in Maya is like modeling my stuff. So I love modeling in, in Maya. Um, that's, you know, I think Maya is a great um, software for that. Well, I prefer Maya over Blender, depending. You know, people, some people like, like Blender as well. I just like the quality of Maya better. But for rendering and lighting, I prefer the, just, just you know, you can, um, export FPX to uh, move it to your uh, to Unity and just light it there. Thank you, thank you.
Hello, um, my name is Darren. I do have a question. I want, first, I want to thank you for your uh, presentation. I found it really fascinating. Um, can LED screens be used with uh, film cameras, like uh, 35 millimeter perhaps, or maybe does it have to be 70, or um, is that just impossible? No, you can use that. You can use um, 35 as well. It, uh, you can use um, most of the film cameras, yes. Okay, thank you. And um, will this, uh, the video, uh, the, the music video, will that be, will people in Iran be able to see that? Uh, that was, uh, it's on YouTube available, yes. It's, um, we have particularly shot that um, um, to be available to public for free. Oh, but, I mean, uh, the Iranian government hasn't had any uh, a reaction to it or anything like that? Well, this particular one is just for women's rights. Um, the meaning behind it was because of the women's voice in Iran. And it's a for human rights, even if the Iranian government has reactions to it, still women's need to have their rights. And oh, yeah. I, oh, I understand that. But I mean, they haven't tried to take it down or anything like that or, or block it or... Even if they block, you know, I honestly wouldn't know the answer to that because I'm not living in Iran. But if, even if they block it, still people will have a ways to to look at look at the music video and find them. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? So I, I do have one question if, if nobody else is going to speak or maybe they're thinking about their question. And that is the choice between, you gave us two examples. One was the green screen uh, that you did in the beginning. And then you went to LED screens, which is, I guess, the future now. And which do you prefer? And what would you suggest that we start doing um, as we start exploring uh, this adventure that you've sort of introduced us to? And I'm, I'm very excited to try this and to bring you to campus potentially for you to do it with us would be a lot easier uh, for us to begin with it too. But do you think it'd be better for us to do it with an LED screen or do you think it's better to do it with a green screen? Uh, you know, it's always good to have access to both. Um, it, depending on the scene, for example, in Dark Acid, there were moments that we needed to do green screen because there is no depending like for example if you're moving from one room to another room and going to through different things you need to have a big set built so that's depending on the budget that might not be possible so then you need green screen for that but if you have a set that you are integrating things for example there is a battle happening and you have your foreground and background is um, led then you use the led because your foreground is like a battlegrounds and everything's shot at that area. With LED, you need to you need only have the limitation of that area that you're using. But if depending on the budget, if you have enough um, time and budget uh, to build a different set and use it, you know, shoot another day, then you can have different multiple sets built and then change your LED. Um, so it depends really. I love using LED because the light integration is, uh, you know, I'm also a VFX compositor and I hate green screens. <laughs> so <laughs> I hate using green screens. I uh, Using word, the word hate is not a good good thing to do, but for compositors, I, I that's why like, uh, if I have a chance to use LED, I prefer LED because everything, the lighting, everything integrates together beautifully. But with green, you have to always bring it in and composite it, change it, so much happening to it to make it look good. Of course, the real-time engine is super helpful, but, you know, still green. Um, the green spill, the blares around it. If you have really the chance to have an LED and use it, definitely I would recommend that. So I'm thinking that I need to have an LED room in my house. 
and I just never oh. need to leave. Is that the dream? Sometimes, right? sometimes I want to have that too. We're like, this wall is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> just have an LED entire room, all the walls. You can just bring the actors in to the house and just, we just shoot wherever we are and just how exciting. Yeah. Oh. Exactly. And you know, for the for the universities, actually, I would highly recommend for the university to have an LED because mm. um, then you also can also rent it out to to indie movies. You can, That's a good idea. Um, you can make money out of it afterwards. So it will be paid. So. Yeah. And then also I'm, I can um, um, double check with the Unity people and see if they would have an option, um, the ed Unity Education um, uh, team, and see if they have an option to be able to offer um, some collaborations with the university for the for the for the students to be able to um, use the game engine and learn about it. Because Unity has an education uh, an education unit um, section that they all help with different universities to be able to collaborate and. Learn. Um, learn the engine and use LEDs. And... Yeah, I'd love it. I know that we have an animation division at the school and they're all using Unity now and Unreal Engine. But um, I kind of feel like we're in this world right now where filmmakers need to know everything. And so I have to know Unity. I have to learn all these things now too. But it's very exciting. It's like we just keep learning new tools and we keep building upon this puzzle because when I see something like this, I immediately think, oh, now I can do vampires. I can do space movies. I can do things I always wanted to do, but never thought I'd be able to do. Exactly. So one of the hopes that I have, you know, uh, before getting to film, I was in uh, public affairs and human rights. And, um, you know, in Iran, I grew up with uh, no right to education because I was a minority. Yeah, part of the religion minority. Um, and then when I came here, uh, my vision was to be able to help uh, the progress of uh, people um, and be able to have, um, you know, learn um, and use um, my learnings to be able to help people, everybody else. You know, I, there is many people that don't have enough budget to be able to make multi-million dollar movies but that we have a lot of talented individuals in the world with lots of stories that can help and change the world. So that was my vision to be able to help um, with that. And I would love to be able to help and collaborate if anyone needs help, let me know. Um, so that's one thing. And then another thing is always something that is always to be able to look forward, um, be a visionary, look, um, especially for directors, DPs, any anyone in different uh, fields to be able to have an open mind to learn and uh, collaborate with uh, different talents uh, and think about be futuristic to be able to um, to be more you know to be able to create beautiful scene. Oh, I really appreciate you saying all this because. I've had a dream project I've always wanted to do, and I think it's visionary, et cetera. You have to come help me make it. Oh, so uh, I know you're not talking about me. You're talking about all the students and all the possibilities, but I feel like you're just talking to me right now, and that'd be wonderful. Well, I'll be more than happy to collaborate. You know, usually that the way I do things is that um, between my projects or my extra times, so, mm, one of the day, one of the ways that I do service for the world is to 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 um, use my extra time that people go party and do things. I use that to help other people um, achieve their dreams. So I would love to. Yes, definitely. Let me know. Okay, fantastic. And I think we will start by bringing you to campus and uh, doing some of these things live. I think would be very helpful to everybody. I think everybody else would agree. So uh, let's go ahead and give a virtual applause for Cesara. Thank you so much for joining us and being here with us today. We can't wait for you to join us in person or for us to see you in Los Angeles. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Bye. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us this week. Thank we'll you. See you next Thank week. you. Good night. Thank yeah. you.